What's up everybody, welcome back to another music making tutorial. I am Clormo and today I'm gonna to be talking to you about the Vintage EQ collection, specifically about the Vintage Console EQ, which is part of that collection, which came with Logic 10.4. And this is just one of the three, so I'm gonna be covering the other two in subsequent videos. The other two are the Graphic EQ and the Tube EQ. And the good thing about these uh, that's gonna allow us to do or not only music makers, but specifically to beat makers, specifically to people that sample uh, to make beats, is that these give you a very distinct vintage sound right out of the box, different to uh, more modern or stock plugins that we already have in Logic for EQs, although Obviously, this vintage EQ collection is part now of this, your stock plugins. So, without further ado, right here in Logic Pro X, I just have a quick arrangement here for a beat. Let's just listen to that dry. I'm gonna be keep giving you more details on the console EQ specifically. So, we go. So that's what we have. That's what how it sounds. And I, right here, I have the three types of vintage EQs that I just talked to you about. The way you access them, you go to your IOFX, EQ, vintage EQ collection, and you have the three there. Today, we're going to be talking specifically about the vintage console EQ, as I said. And before I do that, just to recap what I was trying to say in the beginning, as far as why it's important or what's the advantage of knowing about these EQs, is that each Vintage EQ is gonna provide a very distinct tonal signature, right? So that's gonna give it a different color on the signal specifically tied to these because more than anything, this plugin is just mimicking real life hardware. So the Vintage Console EQ itself, it's mimicking a Neve uh, Console EQ. So this is a very uh, popular, very sought after console EQ. You're gonna see it in many studios and there's different variants of them. There should be a graphic up here showing uh, a particular one that looks exactly what I just, I'm just showing here, right, in Logic Pro. And the the purpose of them, they were, they were, they were brought uh, originally in the 70s and it's a very desirable microphone preamp and EQ for recording not only vocals, but instruments of all types. And the idea behind them is to give you that feel, that vintage feel from, from the 70s, from that era. So this is gonna, in a way, let you achieve that right out of the box. So all three EQs, have something in common is this output area. So it's the first thing I'm gonna talk about. So you have your output uh, area here, you have a drive knob, and that's nothing more than an overdrive. So that's gonna give you the amount of gain and saturation that you're gonna impart in the signal at the output stage. So just think about it as an, as an overdrive, right? And then this is different though from real life hardware. Your output model, by default, is gonna match the the, the particular EQ that you're using, but you can also change it to one of the other two and then mix and match the processing with the output. Then the phase, you either have a natural by default or you have a linear. When you set up in natural, and I have explained this before, you are gonna process, the, the EQ is gonna process the signal and it's gonna boost, boost or cut phase shifts of the original EQ, while the linear is gonna do the same thing without any phase shifts from the original source. So the linear is gonna mimic your linear phase EQ, for example, that we use for mastering. So in a way you can use any of these for mastering. And then you have your, your main volume output level right here. Now, as far as the controls, very simple, you have here a low cut band that you can turn on and off, and then you have the same type of buttons for your low gain frequency range, your mid, and your high. So depending if they're on and off, you are activating 
that range of frequencies, and then you have your corresponding gain knobs for them. For the cut, then you have a cut knob here that what's going to do is, uh, depending on what frequency you're setting that from 50 to 300, everything below that is going to be cut or rolled off at, I think, 18 dB per octave. So you know what you're doing, right? You're just cutting low, low frequencies. And then if you're... Um, low and mid frequencies here in, in proper right you can set them you can set the range here with these knobs so that's all that you can do here or the how it works now i'm going to give you a quick demo uh in a second always remember that you have your factory defaults with some presets that's good to experiment with so that you um understand better how this works so i'm gonna recall the default and now we heard this drive we're gonna listen to it now with the console eq turned on which i have the stereo output level just to you know give uh, a more dramatic or more uh, easy to feel or to um to see right to hear the the difference right out of the just by turning this on So that's off. Not much there, but now I'm gonna start, I'm gonna cut some of the low. I'm gonna give it some, some gain. Obviously, if I lower the frequency range of the low, it's going to be less noticeable. I'm going to do some high gain. Obviously, there's no knob for the high gain because you either go from there on up or, or not, right? I cut my mid. I'm gonna put a little bit of drive to that. Change the face. Now I'm gonna, last but not least, just gonna change the output ball. Uh, let's make it punch here. Probably not that noticeable, but I change the natural frequency. That's more noticeable. So that's just a quick demo of it. I hope that you understood what these do. It's pretty simple, in my opinion, pretty self-explanatory. One last thing that I want to say about the output mode, even though Logic has group or identified each one as like silky, punchy, smooth. Don't, don't be uh, confused by that, you know, read a little bit about the actual real life hardware counterpart of these, um, because that's gonna tell you more specifically and more uh, realistically what each one can do. Like for example, the console EQ, even though it's noted as smooth, it does have that punchy sound uh, or it can achieve that punchy sound. Actually, uh, you 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 probably can associate vintage sound with something more punchier, more more dirtier, right? Like uh, bumping to the speaker. So this this is also achievable here, and it's just something that Logic likes to do, right? Rename stuff and not really name it similar or t like to the real life counterpart. I'm guessing to. Uh, prevent a lawsuit obviously but uh 
you know, it, it's good that they give you just enough that you can uh, go out on your own and figure out a little bit more about the history of the of whatever this came from or whatever this is trying to mimic, and then you know what you can or cannot do with that, okay? So I'm gonna cut the video right here, and the next video, I'm gonna be talking then about the graphic EQ. If you like this, please help me out by subscribing to my YouTube channel, Clormo, liking, sharing. And if you have any other plugins that are related to EQ that you wanna share with the rest of us, just leave a comment below and just say, hey, try this plugin, if, specifically if it's free, because uh, that's gonna be better for most of us, right, to, to try right away. Maybe I will do a video trying that out also if you want to be up to date with everything else that i do just visit me at chloromoindustries.com and with that i'll see you next week peace out people